Okay. Yeah, I don't know what happened. The network just um, went off. The network just went off. I don't know what happened, but I think it's going to be working now. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> okay, it's working I now. Don't know what now. Because the network, this is just went off like that. <laughs> that is what we are talking about. <laughs> if, I, if I touch it from cards, I see. So there will be the network, there will be network, there will be everything, but thank God that we are back. That, that's what we are talking about. How. <laughs> internet can just misbehave like that and wow. do you know this was uh i'm talking about 2003 as of 2003 we had wireless internet all across my campus wow so everybody had internet in their rooms 2002 mm -hmm. sir how long mm -hmm. ago was that maybe uh 19 years no 20 years no no 2003 19 yeah. years ago years ago wow every wow. student had wireless internet in their rooms as of that time anyway they, here in nigeria they are fighting 5g 6g coming up yeah kind of... they're still talking about <laughs> something g and okay, so, so when i was in the radio station yeah. that you now went they told you to start at the radio station yeah when i said i wanted to do journalism and mass com, they said i must start working at the radio station immediately and I must start working at the newspaper, the, the school's newspaper immediately. The school had its own newspaper that published it every week. Everything happening on campus will be there. The school had its own radio station. If you work there, you must have your own show. Mm. So I had a show on the radio station where everybody on campus could hear me. This is this girl that I just came from Nigeria with my thick Nigerian accent. <laughs> so I had my own show where I could interview people on the radio, play music and all that, talk, say whatever I wanted to say. Nobody is censoring you. So you learn by doing whatever you say you wanted to do. You have to start doing it. You don't just write, write, write notes and cram things when you are not actually doing it. And then I said, after a couple of years of doing that, I said I wanted to do uh, um sorry you know why i love working at the school's newspaper you learn to be a reporter from the time that you are on college every mm. event happening on campus you go there as a reporter you take pictures mm. you interview your schoolmates you interview lecturers you say mm. oh the students are complaining that the mm. food in the cafeteria is not that good. Who do I talk to? Oh, go and talk to so 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 person. You get their opinion about the food and the cafeteria. So so so. Or let's say um, somebody died, maybe a prominent person in the country. You get people's opinion and all that. You start learning to be a journalist from when mm. you are on campus. So it was great, great experience. But then after a couple of years, I said I wanted to do TV. And we didn't have a TV station on my campus. And so they said, oh, you wanted to do TV? Wonderful. You start the TV station. Wow. For that I was like, um, say what? Come again. <laughs> they said, oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, you can do it. Just um, come up with a, a plan. We need a business plan. We need a budget. We need to know exactly what you need and so on and so forth. And then you will present it to the department heads, to the heads of the department of journalism. And then if it's approved, we go to the school uh, head and then they'll give us the money that we need, the grant. And do you know that was exactly what happened? I had wow. to work with an architect on campus, one of the students that was an architect, to, to find a place that I wanted us to use as the studio on campus. We went and priced video cameras, everything we needed, editing stuff, all these things. It was my school project. They made me do that as my final year project before graduating. So that became my project. And then I had to present it to the heads of the department why we needed a TV station, what we would gain from having a TV station. This is, I had to do a presentation. They asked me several questions. And then from there, I had to present it to the head of the school and all that. And they approved the money they gave us, the money we bought equipment. It was my final year though, so I didn't get to spend much time. 
and so now we started going to school events and covering video not just uh newspaper and stuff and it was <laughs> great and then after that um i went to graduate school immediately and when i was in grad school my graduate school huge shout out to um cuny graduate school of journalism although they've changed the name now um the school the school had more equipment than most nigerian tv stations i'm not trying to mm. bring down nigeria i'm just telling you what my experience was mm. at that time every single student in broadcasting had more than enough equipment to check out whenever they gave us assignment mm. i would get a camera to myself a tripod everything i needed and i would carry everything by myself to go and cover stories in the city of new york so mm. i don't show up as a student i show up as a proper reporter i had my press tag and press pass and everything from the j school mm. i had a computer to myself to edit my videos i'm not competing with other students we are not mm. sharing equipment although there mm. are some schools where they share equipment but my own school you don't share equipment so you have no excuse you have everything mm. that you needed This was a graduate school that lasted for just one and a half years. Now in the middle of that graduate program sir, I went to Nigeria for internship. At an NTA. Your volume your volume has gone low. I don't know what happened. The volume has I'm gone not low. Sure what happened? Okay. Can you hear me now? I'm hearing you but it's lower than it was before. I don't know what happened. This is interesting. I'm I don't know what happened. Can you Okay. Is this good? Okay. So So that's continue. So in the middle of my graduate program I went to Nigeria for internship at an NTA in my state which was a wonderful experience but it was a troubling experience at the same time the first mm. day that I got to work at NTA sir I entered the newsroom people are saying that my volume is yeah, low volume is low yeah yeah So what do I do because I did not touch this thing. I don't know too it just it just went down at the point so How about now? Is this good? It's still low. It's still low. Even mm. your own is low too. Is this the work of the village people? <laughs> There is no village people anywhere. Else. <laughs> people are saying they cannot hear me now. Wow. Yeah, you know maybe because you have gone to NTA so we are using it We are doing NTA volume now. <laughs> should, should, should I uh, leave and you invite me back? Okay, maybe we we'll should try that as it works. Is the audio still low, people? Please say something. Can you still hear me, sir, or not? Okay, you say we can manage. Okay, let's continue then. No, no, I want you guys to hear. If you are I can not hearing, you what's the point? Uh, you to restart the phone. You get it. Uh, Okay just did somebody try to call you from your end or somebody said the text you Oh no, no I put it in do not disturb Air flight mode okay I put okay. it in do not disturb so nobody is calling me Okay let's move on let's continue because we don't want to miss this uh thing. I'm going to leave and join again hopefully that works Because some people are saying they can hear you so it's possible that uh, I can hear you it was not as loud as it was but I'm still hearing you Mm Okay. So let's continue. All right. I'm I will start screaming. No, so don't scream. <laughs> We don't want you to lose your voice. So. <laughs> I went to do an internship in Nigeria and the first day I entered the newsroom I asked myself I'm like where is the newsroom? And I mean I, I said out loud like where is the newsroom? They told me this is it. As a the whole place was empty. There were chairs and table, but that was it. And then at the corner one side like that there was a desktop computer that was covered. Apparently mm. the typist would come in at 4 to type the news that they would read. <laughs> so me I was coming from a school that There's computer everywhere in the newsroom. When you get into our newsroom, you know you are in a newsroom. There's computer everywhere, everywhere. 
there are TVs for you to monitor the news, what's happening, breaking news and all that. There are printers, there are, you know, you know you are in a newsroom, fax machine and everything. And then there was nothing in a real newsroom when I got to Nigeria. And um, I'm not saying this is the case for every newsroom in Nigeria. Me, I'm from a very interesting place like that that we will not mention. But <laughs> I was shocked. And then if you are a reporter, you must know how to type. Even if other professions don't know how to type, you must know how to type. Because mm. you have deadlines. You must always meet your deadlines. And they said the typist will come in at four to type the news. I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. I was like, Jesus is lost. How did we get here? It was we get it. Um, the entire time I was there, I was just there, Nisa, because I was really sad that my school, a school, who have more equipment than a national, it was an NTA, so a national yeah. television authority. Anyways, um, I spent three months doing that internship. I was very happy <laughs> to go back. I appreciated my school more than ever when I went mm. back. And the plan was as soon as I'm done, I would move back to Nigeria to start a media company. My dad was very excited about this. And he was actually helping me look for a, a piece of land where I can build my media company. My dad he was very proud of me. You know? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I thought when I was in Nigeria, I would use that opportunity to make inquiries about the things that I needed to do to get a license. But hmm. when I went to the National Broadcasting Corporation, sir, <laughs> first of all, they were wondering whether I was lost or like, why are you here? I went by myself. I didn't know. You, you. ordinary you. you. you to come and and I, was, I was very skinny. Your father, the president. My cheeks are out. I went there. I didn't know that was my first crime. You were not supposed to go by yourself. You were supposed to go with somebody that they will see and respect. First of all, I'm a woman. <laughs> Let me say I was a girl. I was a young girl. I'm still a girl, you know. And tiny whatever, I went to National Broadcasting Corporation. They looked at me like, did you say you want license? And they literally laughed. They laughed. And then they said to me, young lady, these are the reasons why you will not get a license. Um, you will need to get, uh, you will need to pay so, so, so million. You will need to pay so, so, so million for license. You will need to pay so, so, so million. Wow. It's amazing. It's amazing. We're having an amazing time. Um, let's uh, see if we can bring her back and then we'll continue this amazing discussion. Let me invite her back. And hope that the voice will be better now. Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria. It's a great country. And the great... <laughs> no, yes. you, didn't, you didn't lose her. She's here. So Welcome. they told me... Thank you. They told me I will need to pay so, so million for license, so, so million for form, so, so million for this, for that. And then at the end of it all, they said the request will still need to go before the president. And that alone will take maybe two to five years. So you are yeah. just wasting your time because it will not be approved. And so I left that day feeling as if my dreams were thrown out of the window, as if um, I felt really sad, you know? But that was that's the Nigerian reality. There are things that should not take time, that should not take lobbying for, things that you can just apply for online here. They make it sound impossible for you. You don't. They, I think Nigerian system frustrates people intentionally, especially if they think you are a nobody, uh, if you are young especially, and if you don't have money or if you don't know people, which is why some people, when they leave Nigeria, 
they come here, they are trying to get their driver's license. They will be asking you, who do I need to talk to? And we will mm. tell, we'll tell them, just go to DMV. You don't need to know anybody. They will say, no, 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 but I need it out soon. We will tell them, they, you will get it on time. There's no law being here. You don't need to know anybody here. Mm. But that was my experience. So I came back to the U.S. and I thought, um, I can do this without the Nigerian license. Because I remember one of the assignments they gave us that time, you had to film yourself talking about something. And I filmed myself talking about the four different types of people, four different temperaments. And the whole class loved it because I made it funny. Me, I don't think that I'm funny, but sometimes people laugh when I talk. So I made it funny and the class loved it. They were telling me, you have to do more of this, do more of this. And then when I finished, I started doing a show on Africa for um, a website at the time that was called Africa Mag. And I was talking about different African countries and what was happening there. But then I was also working somewhere, Channel 74 in New York. But I only worked there for a few months because <laughs> just like that, I was at work one day. My dad had been sick for a couple of days, it wasn't anything serious. So I wouldn't think much of it. And my dad and I, we usually talk at least every other day, you know? And I was really close to him. I'm the youngest of six. And on this fateful day, um, I called him and called him, he didn't pick up. And I remember that day it was raining, it was raining a lot. I went to the UN, came back to work, and then I called again and my uncle picked up my dad's phone. And I'm like, why would my uncle pick up my dad's phone? And I said, where is that? I want to talk to him. And he said, oh, he's fine. He's fine. Um, he's doing well, uh, but he can't talk right now. But he's fine. He's fine. I was really worried that I couldn't reach my dad. And then towards the afternoon, my time, I think maybe around three, four, whatever. It was already the next day in Nigeria. I got an email from a dad of my, a friend of my dad's sending me her condolence message for the loss of my dad. Hmm. And I said, what kind of nonsense joke is this? Uh, this is one of his friends here in the U.S. So I was in the U.S. with my brother at that time. So I called my brother. I said, uh, so when last did you speak with dad? He said, oh, that is fine. That is fine. Uh, this is that uh, he's doing well. I said, when last did you speak to him? He said, no, 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 it's fine. I, I spoke with him. I spoke with him. I said, so why did I get this email from Sharon expressing her condolences? And then my brother said, oh, can I speak with your supervisor? I said, oh, you want to speak with my supervisor? He's my um, elder brother. And I just knew what had happened. And mm -hmm. I just fell down. I started crying. And um, I think it's the worst thing that could happen because I was not home. I had no one. I was the only one living in New York. I had no family members here. And just like that, over, first of all, nobody told me that my father died. I found out later that my siblings, after my dad died, after everybody had cried, they called my brother and they told him. But they didn't have the liver to tell me. Apparently, everybody, they were shifting it to each other. No, you tell her. No, you tell her. No, they were all afraid of what I would do because they knew how close I was to my dad. And so nobody wanted to tell me. Not even the uncles or the aunties. Nobody was able to tell me. They were still thinking about how to tell Adiola. And then my brother here, you would think he would also tell me, but he was also afraid of what I would do. My brother had cried his tears. After some hours, he had gathered the courage to email my father's friends here about what happened. So I now got a condolence message from one of his friends. A long chain. <laughs> wow. Imagine finding out that your father died by hearing from his friend in America that 
oh, they are sorry about your father's loss. And I was like, what kind of joke is this? Wow. So um, my father's uh, sickness is another thing that till today uh, makes me upset about I believe he was a victim of what we call Nigerian factor. There is something called Nigerian factor and, it, and it's real. Like that girl that died on the train, not just her, but everybody that died on the train when the terrorist attacked the train. It's not like accidents don't happen elsewhere, but they are actually accidents. <laughs> uh, but there's something we call the Nigerian factor. If some people told me that he had problems with his lungs, and then later, a close family member told me he was misdiagnosed with tuberculosis. And so they were giving him medication for tuberculosis. The medication was what now affected his lungs. Mm. You see where I'm going here? Yeah, a lot you. of people are misdiagnosed everywhere. It's not like it doesn't happen elsewhere as well, but in Nigeria, it happens a lot. People take medications that is not what they should be taking and so on. But to cut a long story short, when he died, I knew I could no longer go back to Nigeria to do what I wanted to do. Mm. Because he was, he was the one that would follow me anywhere where you need somebody yeah. Yeah. that would be respected and all. And he was big if he put on his agbada, you know. They would <laughs> say, unless I, unless I, before they looked at me. But now they can't see me because it's not there. And I also, I didn't want to be a burden for my mom. I knew right there and then that I needed to find my own way by myself. And so after the barrier and everything, I came back here as a foreign correspondent for the nation newspaper. Mm. By the way, I went to so many media companies in Nigeria begging them to let me be their foreign correspondent just so I could get the media's visa to come back. They all said no. It was only the nation that said yes. And so I came back. I was writing for the nation and freelancing as well. But all these things, my experience moving to the U.S., my father's laws because of our healthcare system, they all contributed to me deciding to speak to those in authority about what they are doing. And I like to believe that my father is proud of what I'm doing <laughs> um, because I strongly believe that if not for the health system, the health care in Nigeria, that he would be alive today, you know, to see me doing all these things that I'm doing. Yeah. So I think when you've lost people to the Nigeria factor, he wasn't the only one that I lost. I lost cousins to accidents that made, that made no sense. Um, I've had, you know, just so many Nigerian factor events happened that made me decide. And, you know, sometimes people say, are you not afraid to do what you're doing? And this, this has always been my answer that, you know, we're all victims somehow. Whether you are speaking out against the government or you are not speaking out, you are still a victim. And I tell people, you are still a victim of not having electricity, even when you choose not to say anything. You are still a victim of queuing for petrol even when you are supporting the government and you don't say anything. You are still a victim of not having running water whether you are speaking out or not. And I say to people that if there is an accident today, you don't even know whether there will be an ambulance that will come for you. Many people have died just like that when they shouldn't have died. And even if they take you to the hospital, you don't know whether they will treat you or not. If you don't have money, you are still a victim. And even if they treat you, you still don't know whether you will get well. I have one daddy here that went to Nigeria, got in an accident. They said they will cut off his leg. The doctor wow. said they must bring him back. The doctor said, no, we have to treat him. We have to cut off the leg. The doctors here insisted on bringing him back. When daddy came, ambulance was waiting for him at the airport. Uh, some months later, sir, I went for daddy's Thanksgiving in Maryland. You needed to see daddy running with his two legs. They did not yeah. cut off any leg. Yeah. Daddy yeah. is fine today with both legs. You would never know he was in a deadly accident. Many people have lost their limbs when they shouldn't. And I'm just saying that we are all victims. Whether you are speaking out 
or you are not speaking now, we are all victims of Nigerian, of the Nigerian factor. Even mm. when you have money and you are able to fly everywhere, sometimes people get to the airport, the plane will not take off on time. I've seen yeah. instances where the plane took off four hours after they said it will take off and you were going for a meeting. And then they yeah. got there, they said they couldn't land, they went back. I've seen all kinds of things happening. Everybody in Nigeria is a victim of the Nigerian yeah. system. So why not speak out anyways? I mean, what else is going to happen when we're already suffering? You may as mm. well speak out while you're suffering. So that has mm. always been my explanation when people say, well, are you not afraid? And I feel like I've said too much already. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. It's amazing. And um, like I said at the beginning, evil tribes when good men do nothing. And if you are not part of the solution, you are indirectly part of the problem. Anyone in Nigeria that does not believe in the Nigerian factor is not being realistic because mm -hmm. uh, like some of my um, daughters will always say, man, Nigeria never happened to you. We Amen. have seen it over, <laughs> over uh, one of our, uh, one of my daughters was diagnosed of the same thing you are talking about, cutting of leg, and we sent that forth to go to London to go and cut the leg because everybody have concluded, doctor, that I know they have to cut the leg. There is no solution. So we took her to, she would we sent her forth, go yeah, look, yes, a lot done. Only for her to return two months later, standing and moving correct. Leg. Thank and you. Got to, they told her which doctor told you they have to cut your leg. Who that which three school did person go to? She's still alive today, moving around with her leg. Not since she came back by herself. Somebody so we, we have seen that happen. We have seen border closure for years. At the end of the day, what's the result of the border closure? And now we are seeing the comedy of Nigeria, a central bank governor whose policy has not produced any results. You have not been able to rule one bank, a central bank, you want to rule Nigeria. Ministry that has not been able to give transportation where he wants to rule Nigeria. We are seeing minister of uh, state or whatever that cannot even do negotiation with ASU. Oh, <laughs> party negotiation with ASU? Oh, ASU, you want to do? <laughs> On president now, say, all of you go and resign. He said, I want to go and see the president where, where that, I, I don't, you are just wondering, are these guys all right? Is it that we are in the zoo? Or we are just... <laughs> so everyone in Nigeria already knows that. But um, having done what you have done, is it that... Are, are there no threats? Are they not threatening you? So what are the experiences you have had? Give us one of the threat experiences. <laughs> or because it's either they threaten you or they want to buy you over to say, okay, come uh, on. Uh, just share some of those experiences with us because I know... You must have faced some I mean, I face threats. It's not like I don't. But I also try to take some cautions. But to be honest with you, I understand it. I understood a long time ago that first of all, what we do in our with our lives matters a lot. Not just here, but there's a ripple effect even in eternity. You know, what we do here, it matters a lot, not just here, but also in eternity. And what I understood a long time ago is that, to be honest, it's not how long you live, but how well you live. I'm praying to God for a long life. Um, my deepest dream is to live a long life with my husband and get to enjoy him. But I also know that in this life, it's not how long you live, but how well you live. I mean, how old was Bella when he died? People will continue to talk about him for as long as we are alive. So, and I'm not saying all that to say that I will die young. I will not die. <laughs> but I don't need to wait till I'm old to try to make an impact or a difference, however little I'm able to. So yeah, I do get threats, you know. Um, there was one that I shared one time on the show, this interesting email that I got. And the person ended their threat by saying that they are coming after my father. So my, <laughs> father, was, my father was dead before I started doing all these things. <laughs> I, I said to them that, Please be my guest. Say me well to him. 
whenever you see him, you know. And every now and then, uh, when I go to places, sometimes I will meet people that want to fight, you know. But it's hard to fight with somebody that doesn't want to fight. Mm. So I've had an instance where I went for an event and someone saw me and they were like, you were the one that says this, says that, says that. They wanted to fight. But me, I didn't want to fight. I was respectful. I greeted them. And then later on, the person came back and said, are you the one? I said, ah, I don't know. You know, sometimes people look alike. You know? <laughs> and they went back again. At the end of the program, they came, apologized for how they were rude. Um, now they wanted to talk as adults. And I'm always ready and available to talk as adults. You know, we can always. By the end of the evening, we were friends. I remember an instance as well, where an, instant, an instance where I got on the train one day in New York and there was this guy that sat next to me and were like, oh, you're the one that did it, and he wanted to fight. Even in New York? Respectful. Yeah, even in New York. And I was very respectful and all that and did not fight back. We met again at an, <laughs> another time on the same train. This time around, he wanted to be friends. You know, I don't want to go into details about like getting threats or whatever, but the one thing I've realized is you think you're trying to fight for people. But to be honest with you, the people at the top that you are trying to fight, they are more united than the people that you you think that you're fighting for. I mean, yeah. we kill each other, we kill ourselves over mundane things every single day. Look at the one that just happened in Sokoto. Yeah. You know that all these politicians, all these big, big people with different religions, so despite their religious differences, when it comes to stealing our money, they are like this. Yeah. When it comes to destroying Nigeria, they are like this. It doesn't matter what any one of them says about the other religion or the other prophet. These people are united when it comes to you will never hear politicians trying to kill each other, trying to, mm, even if they fight openly, jokingly, whatever, when it comes to stealing our money, they are back together. But yeah. we, the people, we focus so much. We major in, our, in minors. Yeah. And then we minor in major. Instead of us to unite in fighting people that are destroying our future, we major in, oh, you, you are Hausa, you, you are Yoruba, you, you are Muslim. No, you, you are a northern Muslim. Me, I'm a southern Muslim. No, you, you are Christian. We focus so much on our differences. Meanwhile, those people keep operating because of our ignorance, because we are focusing on things that don't matter in the long run. Mm. Those people, they keep stealing the money. They keep doing whatever they want and getting away with it because we are not united. So I, I learned a long time ago that if you are expecting people to appreciate you for speaking out, uh, for them, speaking out on their behalf and all that, you will not last in this industry. Do it because this is what you believe in. This is what you are convicted. It doesn't matter whether people praise you or not. And you know what? Even when people praise me for what I do, I never get carried away because I know that the same set of people will be uh, upset with me tomorrow when I talk about something that has to do with them as well. You know what I'm saying? So today, people may be happy with me, praise me, whatever. Tomorrow, when I say something that they don't like, they will not be happy with me. So me, I just face my front. I'm grateful when people <laughs> appreciate me. I'm grateful for positive criticisms. But it doesn't get in this head, though, because this head knows that tomorrow, when I talk about something that they don't like, they will come back again. Um, so that has been my experience when it comes to how I navigate threats. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. We're, we're beginning to um, wrap it up so that we'll be through in another 26 minutes uh, because of the breaking time. So if you are joining us, you are on to uh, The Secret of My Journey. Uh, my name is Olumide Mano, and my guest today is Adiola, Keeping It Real. And we're just learning from her because we believe very strongly that when you learn from people's experience, you are able to glean from them. And that helps you also in your own personal journey. And um, if you want to get um, 
in touch with me. You can follow me on all my social media platform, on Instagram and Twitter, Lumit Emmanuel, on Facebook at Olumide.Emmanuel. And um, you want to get any of our books or our materials, uh, this one of my best-selling book is called The School of Money. Um, it's a book that is called The Bible of Wealth Creation. It teaches you how to make, manage, and multiply your money and also serves as a blueprint for entrepreneurs. So if you go to my website, www.olumideemanuel.org, www.olumideemanuel.org, you can get the books and many other materials that we have. And then you can download our TV app, CSTV. You can go to the App Store and download the CSTV app so that you can follow us so that when I do any events or any of our live seminars and conferences, you can be a part of that. This week, from Wednesday to Sunday, we're having a major conference. If you download the CSTV app, you'll be able to also follow us. So, uh, let's begin to look at a few things now. So, someone is listening to you now, and they're like, with your experience, with what you have gone through, what will be your advice to young Nigerians? Because not everybody has the opportunity to be able to leave Nigeria to go school abroad. We've seen a lot of people that have you know, tried to leave Nigeria through the ocean, through the, through the desert, through Libya, through, we still saw the unfortunate incidents in Ukraine. A lot of Nigerians are scattered everywhere. People are going now. There's the new Jack Spirit. Everybody wants, but not everybody can go. Now, as we on strike, they lost the whole of 2020 to COVID. Mm -hmm. Last year, and now they say they have extended for another three months. And the people that are supposed to be meeting to discuss, they are looking at buying their 500 million dollar form. They are not thinking of it. So if you want to talk to a young Nigerian that does not have the opportunity to travel, they don't have the way without to leave Nigeria, what will you say to them um, will be their part? What will you advise them to be doing to help see how they can change situation in Nigeria? Because we've had, oh, get your PVC. Oh, join the, department, join the party. So what will be your own advice to young Nigerians? So... Um, there are so many people. Okay. I think the first thing I want to say is whatever you have to do to have a travel experience, make sure you do it. Traveling is a major eye opener. Until you know how they do it in Okobabe, Lumiro, um, somebody else's farm, you will always think this is how it is done everywhere. That is a big fat lie. The devil is a liar. It's not in every country that they kidnap people anyhow like that. It's not to, it doesn't happen in every country. It's not in every country that uh, Boko Haram is killing people. It's not in every country that the police will stop you and take money. It's not in every country that they put military checkpoints by the road. Door. I have lived in this country for 19 years. I have never seen one military, check, military checkpoint or one police checkpoint too. It's not in every country that the police will not show up in five, ten minutes. They wait till the robbers have gone and then come. This does not happen in every country. It's not in every country that you'll be watching television and the lights will just go off like that too. Nigeria is just one country. There are so many countries in the world, even in Africa. It's not in every country that you have to go out and fetch water. Out. It's not in every country that you have to buy generator. Now everybody has power generator in Nigeria. It's not normal. These things are not normal. But yeah. if you've never been outside of Nigeria, you would think this is normal. And I'm not telling you to try to get to America or go by sea or something. My people, this Nigerian passport is uh, an ECOWAS passport. It allows you to go to a number of countries without you having to get a visa. First of all, get your Nigerian passport. There are so many Nigerians that don't have their passport and they are dreaming about traveling outside of Nigeria. There's nothing wrong in wanting to go to Canada or America, but you can start by going to the Togo next to you right there, Kuton. Yeah. Things are different in Kutonu, even though it's next to Nigeria. Their roads yeah. are good in Kutonu. At least yeah. visit Kutonu, even if you can only afford two days. Visit yeah. Kutonu. Compare their currency to Nigerian Naira, you will be surprised. Put on right there. Take a trip to Ghana. You don't need a visa to go to Ghana. You, yeah. It's less than one hour flight. 
you to get on the plane. These things don't just happen by accident. You have to plan them. You can go to the Gambia. You don't need a visa to go to the Gambia. Go and see how life is like in the Gambia. These are African countries. So you can start like that in terms of like building travel history for yourself. All these little, little travelings, going to Ghana, going to Kuton, even the um, airport in Togo. I don't know if you've ever been to their airport in Togo. I yeah. remember passing through their airport in Togo and I said, Jesus is Lord. Ha! I almost cried. I said, ah, Togo. Now, I don't know how their roads are like once you leave the airport. But the airport that they knew that people would see, ah, uh -huh, they tried. And you know, it's not normal for people at the airport to be asking you for bribe. That only happens in Nigeria. See, if you don't go outside Nigeria, you would think these things are normal. They are not normal. It's not normal for you not to be able to speak out against your officials. It's not mm. normal for you to be afraid of any politician. It's not a normal thing. It is only a Nigerian thing for you to be shaking because a politician is speaking to you or passing by. I saw one interview one time like that when a Nigerian uh, journalist came to the U.S., they were doing press conference, and I know I even featured this on the show. And this woman wanted to ask question of the president, and also question from um, the president at the time was a uh, uh, what's his name, the past president of the U.S. Oh, Jonathan or America? Trump. Okay, Donald Trump. 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 Okay. And the reporter's hand was shaking. I said, "No, it's because the way they see politicians back up here." You and a politician like that, you'll be going back and forth, back and forth, because this person is supposed to know his job as a politician. And if they slack and you have every right to question them, to ask them questions, you should be upset when you are questioning them. It's not normal to be afraid of politicians. It's not normal to be afraid of pastors or to worship pastors. These are things that happen in Nigeria. It's not normal. But if you don't leave the shores of Nigeria, you would think this is how life is. It's not. That is why I say... First of all, try to get your passport. And it looks like passport is scarce right now. Try to get your passport. Go to those countries where you don't need visa first and foremost. And then all these things will reflect on your passport that you have been to so so, so you came back. Although I don't know why you will not come back if you go to those countries. It's just to build your... Although there are people that don't want to come back anyways. But at least you can build travel history on your passport. And then when you now say you want to go to Canada, at least they see that you've been somewhere you came back. Because they are not looking for people that will go and get stranded and not come back. So you build travel history for yourself. And then when you travel out, be open-minded. I think a lot of Nigerians believe it is the way we do it is the right way. But the world is actually bigger than Nigeria. The fact that this is how you've done it all your life doesn't mean that it's, it's, it's how it must be done. There's no right or wrong way when it comes to some things. Yes, this is how you do it. But when you get elsewhere, you see that this is how they do it. And if it pays you better to do it like that, why not? So I think traveling opens people's eyes, first of all. And now if you cannot afford to travel, if you cannot afford uh, passport, I think it's like 70,000 naira now, or I may be wrong. It used to be 26,000. I googled it now, I saw 70,000. I don't know. If you cannot afford a um, passport to travel out, get yourself informed about what is happening outside the world. Google is your best friend. The same internet that people use to watch things on Instagram, on Facebook, you can actually use that to get yourself enlightened as well about so many things. Just Google. Is it possible to have uninterrupted electricity? In fact, Google will look at you and say, come again? Uh-uh. It is very possible. Do you not? No, this is Google talking back to you. That in so -so -so country, all these countries, they have to say, but it is your government that is doing you. That is what Google will tell you. So you will now take what Google tells you that your government is doing what it's doing you. You use that to enlighten yourself when it comes to electricity. Or you can use that to find out innovative ways of getting electricity. Nigerians are inventing things left and right every day. But our government doesn't care. If not, there are so many Nigerians that... There are so many things that would have been available for Nigerians to use. Like by now, 
you would think we would have electric vehicles that will be powered by solar because of the sun that we have, the abundance of sun that we have in Nigeria. Anyways, if you cannot travel, Google is your friend. Find out information on Google. Don't be using Google just to chat, just to watch videos or to watch porn. Nigerians now are big on porn. The devil is like that. Use Google to educate yourself about all kinds of things happening outside of the shores of Nigeria. Now, having said all that, sir, I know people that didn't have money for anything. And somehow they were able to get themselves full scholarship to go and study abroad. Like I know so people that didn't have anybody. I think sometimes people think you have to, to have somebody in their abroad before you can go to their abroad. Unfortunately, a lot of times when people have somebody abroad, they are expecting there's somebody abroad to do everything for them to come to the abroad. I'm not saying abroad is heaven. There's a lot of suffering in this abroad. Another topic for another day. You will walk, walk, so tell you will say, Father, who did I offend? One day like that, you will say, who was chasing me from my village? Especially if you go to where it snows a lot. You will get out one day and you will go back inside and sit down for five minutes just to think things through before going back out because of how cold it is. You will ask yourself, suddenly, me, me, or maybe it is the village people that have come because of how cold it is here. So it's, life here is not easy. And here, you actually work. Like, you cannot be doing... Like, government work back home is Jelenke. You are enjoying government work, ministry work. You arrive when you want. You leave when you want. You go for prayers. You go for church meetings, whatever. Here, you work daytime, nighttime, by time, and overtime. So, I'm not saying life in abroad is heaven. But I think every Nigerian should strive to visit outside of Nigeria, even if it is three times in their life get out of Nigeria. You can apply to schools by yourself. You don't have to know anybody. Fill out your school application or application for conference. Find out what you need to do to get scholarship. A lot of schools here don't give scholarship, but those that give, give. There's a young guy that I met recently who got a full scholarship because of his score in SAT. He got 1,200 plus in SAT. And the school here in America gave him full scholarship. This happened during this time of covid Full scholarship yeah. for the four years that he will be on campus. He didn't have to know anybody. It didn't matter whether he was coming from a rich home or not. He didn't have to worry about paying school fees here because school fees here is on another level. It's so, so expensive because it's not what they charge their students, their citizens, that they charge international students. They charge international students more than double what their citizens pay. That is the way they make their own money. So go online, do your research by yourself. You don't need to know anybody. And if you know somebody, stop waiting on them to do things for you. Because guess what? People here are trying to survive. You need to pay bills, bills, bills. So try to find out what you need to do to get in school program or to get a, um, what's it called, a uh, conference or whatever, just so you can also see. You don't need to wait to get to heaven to see how good life can be. <laughs> right now, while we're on this side of eternity, go see what, how other people are living. And when you go, be open-minded. Be open-minded to learn. Don't be like, ah, these people are sinners. I had somebody came visiting one time. We got on the train in New York, and I, this couple, they were kissing each other on the train. And the man said, ah, this country is full of sin. Look at people kissing on the train. I said, Daddy, how do you know that they are not husband and wife? And then he said, ah, it's true. They may be husband and wife. I said, yes, they may be husband and wife. <laughs> I'm just trying to say, be open-minded. Don't go abroad with the judgment mind that you're going there to judge them because a lot of people believe that only Nigerians know God. If it's true, we won't be where we are. We are very religious. It doesn't mean that we know God. We don't treat people right. We don't... Um, Human life called Joa Loju, and we say that we know God. We are, being religious is different from knowing God. We are not even nice. We are not nice to each other. And we claim that we are more uh, religious. I'm just saying, go outside of Nigeria, see how people live. I think that would help in terms of, you know, changing your mentality. Because I think Nigerians, we are victims of not just Nigeria, but of the Nigerian mentality. There's a Nigerian mentality wow. that if you are not careful, if you stay too old before you leave Nigeria, it's hard for you to change. You mm. always have mentality. 
but if you are if you are young this is when to try and go elsewhere as well it doesn't mean it's heaven it doesn't mean they are right in every way but at least you see how life is like elsewhere as well wow wow that's that amazing. question <laughs> yeah, that, that's amazing and um, we've tried to help people see this over time um we do what we call this virgin your passports where we take people <laughs> Yeah, it's this version of Paso will go to Benin Republic and Togo. Just you know, and it's a one day trip. They leave by seven a.m. by seven p.m. in the night. They are back. Seven latest by nine. They are back. Just That's to this. And when you tell people that your Nigerian passport can take you to over thirty-three different countries, they are like, ah, oh, it's America I want. And all these things are things we try to help people understand. And then when it comes to religion, I say to people that religion is more dangerous than the devil. Because um, m most of the problems in the world is caused by religion. And Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship with your creator. But most of it, what we practice in Africa is more relig religion, religion, religion. And that's why we have all the evil that is happening now. And people just mess up a lot of things. So well, as we begin to close now, someone is listening to us right now. And the person <clears throat> like to be like you. They want to start their own you know, platform where they can speak. Um, they want to be able to have a platform where they can have a voice to be able to share their views or use it as a platform to educate or to enlighten, you know, or to advocate. So what will you say to that person? What are the one, two, three, four steps that you would like to say, okay, why not do it this way? Why not do it this way? And finally, that name, keeping it real, how did that name come about? So that would probably be our last um, question. <laughs> Let, let, let me tell you something funny before I answer these questions. I mm. told someone that I knew could afford to have, um, could afford to live outside of Nigeria. And I tell them, I just want you to have options in life so that if anything happens, at least, you know, you have a visa to somewhere, whatever. So the, the person told me that uh, in the abroad, I want more man boy you. Girls get pregnant. <laughs> yeah, she has she has daughters, and I was like, "Wow, this is a very interesting way of looking at things." Because as far back as I remember, even before I left Nigeria, girls get pregnant in Nigeria as well. Yeah. Do, do today, teenagers can get pregnant, and I'm like, "What has this to do with you getting a better life for your your children, especially giving them?" better opportunity and i was like anyway so whatever you want to see somewhere that's why i keep saying please be open-minded when you go outside of nigeria now if anybody wants to be like me do what i do this is what i will say to them please please do not be like me be better you can be you can be seven million times better than me you see eh? first of all be yourself be yourself don't be anybody else Everything about you makes you unique. The way God made you, there was no mistake at all in the way God made you. See me when I was growing up, people would say anywhere to for me. They talk. Today I make money by doing this talk. But I don't just make money, I make impact mm. by doing this talk. It is who I am. I'm not trying to be anybody else. Um People said I was funny growing up. I'm able to use this comedy to do what I do. Don't suppress any part of who you are. Just harness it to mm. be a better version of you. Mm. People say you are short. You can use it for your good. People say you are tall. You can use that to play basketball or whatever. You are unique the way you are. If you, you are quiet, you don't talk much, there are things that makes you stand out. There are things you can do that nobody else can do it like you do. So mm. it's okay to aspire to be like someone, but don't be like them. Be better than them because you can, you can be a better version of you. If you're trying to be somebody, you may limit yourself because you are trying to be like them. But be you because who you are is even better. It's yeah. even more unique. So that would be my first advice. And use every part of you. When I was in secondary school, people make fun of the way I speak Yoruba. I still remember. They would say, ah, Yoruba, 
Say I'm going over to me. Oh yeah, oh yeah, to Ghana. Eh, Lagos people would say you're buying yeah. Oh, uh, different. Me, I would say you're buying me. I don't yeah, to oh yeah, to none. She understand. <laughs> but today. I can use this Yoruba when I when I speak this Yoruba on my show, it makes people laugh. Yeah, yeah. the conk Yoruba that some people will say Arauko, it's okay. Me in Basara Arauko, me in Basara Ali I will see Arauko. If you talk at the Wajja, no one. At Ali at Arauko, you go at the Wajja and see your party. So I'm able to use this Yoruba. I I didn't need to change who I am. You don't need to change who you are because there's only one of you. Yeah. In this entire world, so use that part of you that makes you you. Even the things that people laugh about, use it for your good. And then to answer your question about where the name, uh, also use social media for your own advantage. See me today, without with or without the Nigerian uh, TV license, I'm getting into people's televisions, people's homes, people's uh, computers, people's phones. There's always a way. When they tell you that there is no way, if you want to do something, eh? There's always a way. Google mm. internet, like I said, is your friend. Google how to do things. If you cannot find a way to do it, there are people that have done it. So you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Find people that have done it and make it even better. So use the internet for your for your own advantage. And then to talk about how the name came by, when I was in grad school, I would always say it's been real. Especially when I'm leaving, and that means it's been a real pleasure. It's like the short, like, so that y'all, it's been real. I'm gonna see y'all later. Peace out. That that's me when I'm leaving school, when I'm going home, and all my classmates they knew it. Soon as they heard, it's been real. They know that's a deal. That's a deal. That's a deal. And so when I started doing the show, talking about Africa in 2000. And nine was when I started doing that. That time I was doing it for African Mag. I just called it African Update. And、mm. then later, when I started freelancing at、uh, Sahara TV, and they asked me to do the news when the person that was doing the news had left. I think this was twenty eleven. I thought about I wanted to give this a name. And I didn't know what to call it, but then I remembered always going by. Oh, it's been real. It's been real, and I'm trying to keep it real with this show. I'm trying to keep it real with African officials. I'm trying to keep it real with Nigerian officials. By the way, the reason I don't just talk about Nigeria is for the sake of those that may not be able to travel, for them to see how life is like outside of Nigeria. And we're still in Africa. I don't talk about、uh, non-African stories. It's rare. I focus on Africa, and the reason I didn't just focus on Nigeria is so that Nigerians can open their eyes and see that you no, know, in Botswana things are working well. Away. Maybe some of them have never heard of Botswana. Now you know, and so I decided to call it "Keeping It Real" with Adiola because,、uh, first of all, it was like a nickname for me at the time. Also, because of what I was trying to do was to keep things real.、Uh, let's just be real. Let's keep it real. So that was how I came by the name "Keeping the Real" with Adiola. Wow, wow! It's been an amazing, amazing pleasure, you know, learning from you and speaking with you. And、um, I believe that everyone that have listened to us today have learned one or two things.、Um, if you want to be the best version of yourself,、uh, be yourself because you can actually be better than the person that you have.、Um, Um, seeing that you emulate, you want to emulate, just be yourself, because you, the best person you can be is yourself. So it's been a, it's been amazing. So for those of you that have been listening to us, we've been、uh, spending the last like ninety minutes together with Adeola. We've been keeping it real, and it's been an amazing time. And like I've said to every one of you, if you do not have this book, this is、uh, one of my best selling book. It's called The School of Money. It's a book that has been a blessing to people all over the world. So you can go to my website www.olumideemmanuel.org, and then you can get any of the materials there, and also follow me on my social media platform. Next week Sunday, we're going to be、um, having the phenomenal Omoni Oboli. 
So Moni Oboli will be joining me next week Sunday. It's also 8 p.m. Nigerian time. And for those of you that would like to join us, don't miss it next week Sunday. So Deola, what's your final word for our audience today before we close? What's your closing word? Um, so the closing word, first of all, I saw someone asking about Kalido. Kalido, come on, say hi to them. Come, come, say hi. You mean we're okay. going to like he said I should wave, just wave, okay. He said I should just wave. I saw some people doubting his existence in the comment section. That's why I wanted him to say yeah. that. Why? Um, he, he, he said to wave. wave. To many people. And I think you should unveil. I know, I just now. Okay, he said to wave. And no, by the way, it's not my husband. Because some people will start saying, it's your... no, 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 my husband is a gentleman. You know, he's he's not a troublemaker like Kalido. <laughs> um, so, but my closing word would be that I think whatever profession anyone decides to choose, please make sure that you use it for impact somehow. You know, I like to believe that I'm doing the work of the Lord as well. No, um, I, don't, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you have to be a pastor for God to use you. I don't think you have to be on the pulpit for God to use you. I don't think you need to have a church for God to use you. Whatever profession you decide to choose, use it to touch lives. Use it to impact lives. And it may not be about, you know, me doing the show, but we have a foundation that we use to touch lives. And it's been a while that I talk about all the things that we've been doing, even though we are working behind the scenes and people don't know. But I wanted to, I'm trying to say that because this life eh, is just for a limited time. What we do here matters, not just here, but also in eternity. All these politicians that are stealing money and all that, the day they die is the end of it. They're not taking a dime to heaven with them. We won't even bury it with them. Have you seen, when Abacha died, they did not put any of his money in this. After he's dead, they are still recovering the money that he stole. So whether you're a doctor, whether you're a nurse, whether you're a journalist, whether you're a police officer, whatever you choose to do, I think the most important thing is people will, that people will remember is how you treated them or how you made them feel while you are carrying out your work. So use it to touch lives, whatever you decide to do, even if you are on social media. So I think that would be my last. I think because for me, you know, it goes beyond doing a show uh, making people laugh. I believe that this life is a gift. It's a privilege for me to be alive. It's a pri especially when I've had close people that died, you know. Every day is a gift. Make it count. Whatever it is that you do, do it as if that's your last, um, that's your last day or that's your last um, opportunity. So for me, I think uh, this is the, a principle that guides me in terms of whatever I do. And no, I don't just talk about things that are wrong with Nigeria. I talk about people that are doing amazing things in Nigeria as well because people tell me they're only focusing on the negative. It's not true. But the reason I talk about the negative a lot is because I know where we can be as a nation if we can just get our acts together. And all these officials, they don't like the, being disgraced outside of Nigeria. So they feel like, oh, they want to do good. They care about their image. That is why we have to keep it real with them. Anyways, thank you guys for joining. Thank you, sir, for having me. Who am I? I'm really humbled. I'm grateful. Thank you so much for your time. And thanks to everybody that joined. Peace out. God bless you. So um, if you have been listening to us, um, you can. I'm going to put this video on my IGTV now. Um, and you can also go to my YouTube channel, Odumide Emmanuel on YouTube so that you can watch the replay of this uh, session we have had, um, so that you can watch it and then tell other people to go and watch. And um, Adeola, don't let anybody um, stop you from doing what you are doing. You are a pastor. Pastoring has nothing to do with it. <laughs> I'm not a pastor. <laughs> to, be, to be a pastor means to be a shepherd. It means to have influence over your ministry. It is religion that has defined pastoring with church, and all those stuff. So whatever sphere of influence you operate in, you are an apostle in the marketplace. Every child of God is a minister. And every territory that God has given to you is your pulpit. So you are a pastor 
and you are using your own platform of the media to reach and influence lives. So keep that dream alive. Keep fire burning. And, and I wanted to know that you may not know, we've seen a lot of comments here already um, of how people are being blessed by you. And I want you to know that you are making a lot of difference. You may think that, you know, I've been doing what I've been doing now. This is my 33rd year in ministry. And uh, many times when you look back, you see lives and you don't know the kind of impact you're having on people. But by the time you bump into people at the airports in different countries and they're like, oh, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, this, that, you're like, wow. I didn't even know that. You know, you go to campuses, you speak to thousands of people. There is no way I can know three, four, five, ten thousand people one on one. I don't know them, but they know me because I'm one person doing what God has called me to do. And then you now realize that wow, I didn't even know I was making this much difference. So I wanted to know that you are making a lot of difference because you are if camera. We are even having opportunity to, you know, I've been to church today. We've had two services. I've spoken to thousands of people. So when you see thousands in front of you, at least you know people are listening. But you, you are in front of just one camera. You probably don't think people are listening, but I want you to know that they are listening. So don't stop doing what you are doing. And you will finish well. You will finish strong. The Lord will bless you. Bless your family. Bless your daughter and the other children that are coming if you want more. And God respect all that concerns your life in Jesus' name. So thank you very much for joining Thank God you. Bless. Bye. You too. Bye. Bye. So everyone, you can go to the YouTube channel to watch this video again. And um, as you go to watch it again, um, you'll be able to get more lessons. So if you are not following me, you can follow me on my social media platform. Um, on Instagram and Twitter is Olumid Emmanuel. Olumid Emmanuel. And I'm going to be having a Money Oboli next week Sunday, 8 p.m. Um, so next week Sunday, 8 p.m building your personal brand with Olumide Imano and Omoni Oboli. It's going to be an amazing time, which is next week, Sunday. And um, for as many of you that have never traveled before and you want to start traveling, if you're in Nigeria, you want to travel, you can contact us in our office, 0809-144-7423. 0809-144-7423, so that we can help you see how you can begin to travel. We, we can help you. We that we do a lot of um, traveling, um, we do a lot of tours to help people to just go and have learning experiences in different parts of the world, like she has said. And if you want to get any of my books or material, just go to www.olumideemmanuel.org, www.olumideemmanuel.org, and then you get all the material. The School of Money book, it's um, a Bible of Wealth Creation. It's a book that everyone should get. So your library is not complete without the School of Money book. And um, also try and download the CSTV app. The CSTV app, go to the App Store or Google Play Store and then download the CSTV app so that you can follow us um, from Wednesday to Sunday. We're having a conference, myself, Pastor Matthew Ashimolo, Reverend Steve Mensah, uh, and Joshua Selman. So Wednesday all the way to Sunday. So you can follow us live through the um, CSTV app. And then you go to Olumide Manuel on YouTube so that you can listen to this um, broadcast. Uh, so if you are not following me, start following me now so that you'll be able to get notifications when next I go online. Because by this time next week, Sunday, I'll be going live, online live with Omoni Oboli. And it will be good for you to also be a part of that so that we can learn from um, our own journey also. So every uh, from time to time, I do a lot of Insta Live sessions just to help educate people and um, help us to be better than what we already are. So if you need, if you have any question, uh, you need our help in any way, just feel free to contact us, um, call the office, send an email. Um, the email address is overseer at gmail.com, overseer at gmail.com. And then the phone number is 0809-144-7423. 0809-144-7423. And the website, if you want to get my books and material, it's www.olumideemmanuel.org. It's been nice having you guys on board. So I'm going to put this on IGTV right now. Um, we had to spend more time because the first part was cut off. And then we had to like um, reconnect again. So what, when you get to the YouTube, if you see that a part is cut off, don't worry. Whatever, whatever you see, that's what we have available. Because the first part just went off like that. Uh, don't know why. So thank you very much. 
Um, if this meeting has blessed you, let's hear some testimonials. If Diola has been a blessing to you, just uh, send some shout outs so that when we post it on IGTV and on um, on the YouTube, she'll be able to see your testimonial. So if this has blessed you, let's, let's have your testimonials. Just send a thank you, send a, uh, a word and let her know that she blessed you tonight. Wow, it's just been amazing, amazing learning from from her today. So no matter what your dream is, be yourself and don't let anything stop you. Be yourself and don't let anything stop you. Be yourself, don't try to be like somebody else. The people you are looking at that you are desiring and admiring, you can actually be many times better than them. Uh, you can use what they have done as the platform and add your own uniqueness and then you become better. Well, thank you very much. I need to go now. God bless you all. So go to the um, website to get materials and then go to the YouTube channel Ulumide Emmanuel on YouTube. Once you get to the YouTube channel, you need to like, subscribe, and um, also share so that a lot of people can also get this um, uh, interview and discussion. Thank you. God bless you. Bye.